Good morning, fellow privateers. Got a little bit of a late start here. Later start than normal. I've also um, got some problems with my trading view, so I'm gonna, these are going to be my Bloomberg charts. And today is going to be a very abbreviated um, video because <coughs> it's a uh, make sure this. Yeah, it's a. Um, Happy Easter, happy Passover, whatever floats your boat. But we do have Easter Monday in all the Commonwealth, in Asia, um, Europe. So we were expecting some very um, quiet, quiet markets. And let me just take a look here. Here's my monitor. Um, the only thing moving is dollar Turkey doesn't really trade everything nothing has moved more than like 0.1 basis uh, 0.1 percent anyhow so we're just gonna go through the charts real quick here I'm gonna go right down the right down the row um, let me move this thing over because like it's easier for me to click on it um, there's a dollar yen weekly uh, unchanged interesting doji bumping up against massive resistance 112 10 to 25. BOJ has been propping this thing up. We're going to look at dollar Swiss as well. You're going to talk about central bank intervention. I'll show you a great example in a minute. But, uh, you know, this is a big level. We had a doji week, also a quiet week, you know, almost an inside week. Um, it's time to pay attention here. Big resistance indecisive week so we're watching dollar again this week uh, euro dollar down week decent red bar closed near the lows Aussie reversal lower week is what that is so we're still kind of tracking this we did this 50% retracement the, you know, the level that we've been talking about ad nauseum. I'm just going to get rid of these fibos. Forget about this bar. It was like a 15 minute move. I can't wait till that bar is off the chart too, because it's fucking driving me crazy. Um, right here, this red line. It will go, and when it goes, we will be back down to this phantom low, which actually was lower than this because I remember buying some um, back in January. I got lucky. I just happened to be in front of the screens. I had some. We had some Aussie puts on, and we uh, we got really lucky. And we bought some. I think I bought 67.18. So even though it shows a 67.33 low on Bloomberg. Uh, it was lower than that, and that was a, you know, it's a nice way to start out the year. Anyhow, uh, cable, weekly, hold on, let me move this thing. <clears throat> not, not, it's a bearish engulfing because it took out, you know, a lot of this previous week, but um, we did not make a new high. No clue what's going on there. There is massive support. We've been talking about it, 129.60, which happens to be a, it's funny, it's a 30-week moving average. I didn't realize that, but it's a huge level. When it goes, it's a, we think it's more than a trade. You know, it's not a scalp. It's a yielding, you know, 150 to 200 points. I could see it going back and testing this 127.70 area. So that's cable. Um, here's Kiwi. That was the weakest last week. It was down one ish percent, I think, on the week. Um, and it was a bearish engulfing. This thing just can't, it can't get, there's no life to it at all. Flightless bird. So why not? Why not go back to that January 6580? And it's only 100 points away. Dollar CAD. Um, you could pretty much call this a 
Polish and golfing. Yeah, I think it's an outside reversal week. Higher, according to Bloomberg. Dollar Swissy, very strong. Very, very strong. Look at this bar. This is, I'm telling you, this is the Mountain Nazis. This is Swiss National Bank. They are on the bid. They are buying nonstop dollars. And what do you think they're using those dollars for? Fangs. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, or the, there's a new acronym. I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically Intel and I think it's Mix. Uh, Microsoft, Intel, Cisco, and someone else. There's a lot of tech earnings coming out this week. We do have some economic data. Um, let me find my notes. We've got, um, let's look at the, the dollar index real quick. This is kind of interesting. There, a bit of divergence between the dollar index and, you know, we had a pretty nice up week. Um, you know, a little bit of an outside week, but we had weak retail sales, we had weak PMIs and weak housing, and the dollar index rallied. So something is going on there. Um, all these numbers are to mark indicators. You can read about them online. I'm not going to really get into it. But we have the Eurozone CPI was out. That was in line, but it's below the 2% target. That came in at 1.4%. We have the UK CPI stable as well just shy of 2%. Um, Kiwi obviously was hit kind of hard in the lower Kiwi CPI. Um, oil was up 0.3% on the week. Gold was down a percent. 10 years were unchanged at 256. The S&Ps, we should get to that chart because this is kind of interesting. Here's a pretty good doji week. I think we can be short this with a stop over last week's highs, which is 29.23. Um, and what do we have coming up this week? We have US PMIs, we have durable goods, we have GDP, we have the Bank of Japan and the Bank of Canada. So let's pop over the dollar CAD chart. Um, you know, there's been a lot of dovishness coming out of both the data and the uh, and I think this is a pretty powerful bar. Um, you know, why can't we go test this 130? This isn't even that far away. It's 100 points higher, 134.67. So I think Bank of Canada be, could, could be int interesting this week. I think that there's some, um, I'm starting to read more and more articles about um, some of the Canadian mortgage lenders. And, um, you know, there's kind of an uptrend line, two point touch only. But for me, you know, dollar cat is kind of either above 134.70, we'll call it, or below 132.50. It's, you know, it's in a rectangular pattern, so I'm not getting too excited. You know, vol is still extremely low across all asset classes. Um, let's take a look here at crude oil. It's up again. We're, we're at week 12 of 13. So next, not this week, but next, we could get, and I suspect it'll be at higher levels, we could get a, um, a DeMarc sell signal. But let's do the fibs here too, because this looks kind of interesting. We're bumping up against pretty important levels. You know, we are above the two-thirds FIBO. The one that I like to fade, though, is more this uh, 76.4 or the three-quarter FIB. Um, you know, that's another $4 higher. So why, you know, why not? May as well go up there. And if we get up here, I think this is a really good selling opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about the data. We've got Easter Monday kind of upon us in Asia. Um, I 
don't know if you're going to hear from the privateer in the morning on the London Open or the European Open because there will not be a lot of players involved. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get get involved in, you know, midweek if there's some – because there are some hot spots that we're paying attention to. Um, still working on our – for, on our um, template for a, uh, you know, either a weekly or a couple times a week. Um, I guess you can call it a research piece newsletter where we're going to curate um, some of the research that we get and kind of put it all in one spot and sh show everyone what's moving and and uh, you know where the where the flows are going and positioning and the daily sentiment index and the you know anything that is important for um, for that week. So we'll we'll get that out. We'll start get that out. We're we're, we're kind of fine tuning things, but uh, be patient. It's a work in progress, but uh, I think it'll be really helpful. Anyhow, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, happy Easter Monday for all of you Christians and we will either speak to you on the uh, European Open or we'll wait a day and we'll do it on Tuesday and uh, keep you up to date on anything that uh, is of importance alright good luck trading and have a great week ahead Cheers.